Hello everyone and welcome back to Retaking the Nation. Today we've got some news regarding some of the presidential 2024 election polling that has come out from the New York Times. No, this is not a slew of Trafalgar Group polls showing Trump up. This is probably the most reputable pollster in the entire nation uh, that I can think of. Pulling out and bringing out a slew of polls for us to look at here. But before that, you should like the video and subscribe to the channel down below if you want political updates daily. And then some great live streams regarding geopolitics, religion, and culture, you're going to want to check in there. Anyways, let's talk about some of the recent polling we have. So we have hypothetical matchups of Joe Biden against three potential candidates and then Trump against two potential candidates here. And it's nothing but a complete bloodbath for Joe Biden, who I would say is the presumptive nominee. And it's not just Trump is tied in these states. He's up in some cases, double digits, but in some, most cases, mid double digits in most of these polls. So let's just go down the list here. We have in Georgia, Trump is up six against Biden. Remember, that state was a basically a tie in 2020. Pennsylvania, Trump is up four. Michigan, Trump is up five. Wisconsin, oddly, Trump is down two. But remember, this is the same pollster that put out a poll showing Biden up 17 in Wisconsin. That state was within one. So, uh, you know, maybe take that with a grain of salt. Nevada, Trump is up 11 points, which is pretty insane. And then Arizona, Trump is up five. So these are absolutely devastating numbers for the Biden campaign. Is this going to be the final result? Probably not. I don't see Trump winning Michigan by five unless something even more disastrous happens. But we do know Joe Biden has been losing support uh, in some of those Rust Belt states due to the whole Israel-Palestine conflict that's been going on. And so we can see here that Trump is basically outperforming in all these swing states. And remember, since when has Trump led in Rust Belt swing state polls a year out from the election? He basically never leads in Rust Belt polls, yet he comes very close each time, winning in 2016 and then coming within you know very, very slim margins in 2020, despite what the you know establishment of the electoral mafia uh, suggested. So the fact that he is up this much, this far out, leads me to believe that, yeah, Biden is incredibly unpopular, and that's what his approval rating is showing. And Biden is, is sinking in every one of these matchups against all the Republican candidates across the board. Arguably, for some reason, Nikki Haley seems to be pulling the strongest, which is very interesting to me. But given the fact that Trump is the likely nominee at this point, we kind of have to compare numbers there. And if we look at the actual New York Times article, uh, they show the margins here with Trump with the big leads and says President Biden is trailing Donald Trump in five of the six most important battleground states one year before the 2024 election by the New York Times and Siena. And here's the share of who think each candidate is too old to be president. 71% uh, does not have the mental sharpness to be president. Biden does not have the temperament. Biden and Trump are basically even there. And this is a trend from 2020 to 2023. So showing that voters really are changing their opinions on Biden at this point. Now, they do want to note that these are snapshots. I don't think these are going to be the final results, but they show sort of what the, how the public is feeling about these things. Um, as we've written throughout the year, the Times Siena survey isn't alone showing Biden with a shocking weakness among Black and Hispanic voting groups. Put together, I think these survey results are showing something real. I don't think it's an artifact of survey bias. Trump, uh, Biden seems to be hemorrhaging support amongst Blacks, amongst Hispanics, and then amongst Arab voters as well, which we've been seeing here. So the sort of frail coalition the Democrat Party has been putting together through their use of identity politics seems to be finally coming apart the seams as many of these groups are finding that they have competing interests and that they're not actually uh, all on the same side in some of these cases here. And that seems to be mostly the case with maybe Hispanic voters who seem to be trending the most to the right. Uh, black males are trending to the right, but it's going to be a long time or maybe never that the Republican Party will actually win black voters again. But if you think about how much black voters are needed amongst the Democrat coalition, especially in a state like Georgia. Even a 10 point trend amongst black voters spells doom for the Democrat Party. And the poll helps explain why Democrats have continued their heavy focus on abortion in the off year elections, which, yeah, it seems to be maybe their only issue that they're above water on. But when it comes to the economy, national security, and immigration, Biden is very much underwater. Biden's worst state in the poll was Nevada, which has the most diverse population. His strongest state was Wisconsin, which was the most white population. And the results in between also mirrored the diversity of each, each state with Trump performing better and more diverse battlegrounds. Who would have thought, right? Trump would be actually the Republican to bring uh, different groups together uh, in and in, invite them into the Republican coalition, despite many thinking, oh, build the wall. That's a suicide. You know, that, that's suicide to suggest we should build the wall. That's going to alienate Hispanic voters. Well, I mean, if you look at the trends, uh, he's been continuing to do quite well there. 
Swing state voters are generally happier with where Trump sits on the ideological spectrum than Biden. 36% say Biden is too liberal, compared with 27% who say Trump is too conservative, and they are more, also more likely to say Biden is not liberal enough than Trump is not conservative enough. And then a senior Democrat strategist close to the Biden campaign said, it's not time for Democrats to panic, nor is it time for them to put their heads in the sand, but it's a time for major recalibration. Yeah, obviously something uh, is not working here. And if we would just go to, you know, electoral map, so to speak here. And if we look based on that polling information that we have here, um, let me find a presidential map for 2024. So ignore the margins real quick. If we just look at this poll, Nevada seems to be red, according to them, Michigan, Pennsylvania, um, you know, Maine second would remain in Republican hands. Obviously, the rest of Maine would be Democratic at that point and Georgia, a massive lead. And then you give Wisconsin to Biden. That already hands Trump a victory. I mean, with with those leads in those swing states. And I doubt if he's winning Michigan by five, he will win Wisconsin. Now, I'm not saying he's going to win Michigan by five, but I would be surprised if Michigan voted to the right of Wisconsin uh, in 2024. I would find that very surprising. And in a you know election where he's winning these swing states by five, he's likely winning the popular vote or coming very close. And that puts like a state like Virginia uh, in play. I wouldn't say Colorado, but Minnesota would be in play. New Hampshire would be in play at that point. Make sure I fill in Delaware here. Um, Colorado would be closer, but not you know in uh, flipping territory. New Mexico would be closer. I mean, this is kind of the electoral map we would be looking at here. Could end up with over 330 electoral votes. It wouldn't be completely outside the realm of possibility. Is this a wish cast? Probably, but this is just based off the polling that we're seeing here. So it's very interesting to see. Biden collapsing in these polls. Let me know in the comments down below. Will this play out or will Biden surge back? I'm actually interested to hear uh, what you guys have to say. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you guys next time.